Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Springdale 1860. This is a great floor plan because it is a smaller floor plan, but as you can see, it has a huge slide for such a small floor plan. So it really helps open it up. And this is something that's kind of been closed off for travel trailers for a while. Uh, you know, the, the similar floor plans, other manufacturers have had something like this for a few years now. But uh, if you haven't seen one, again, it's fantastic because it gives you all the space in a smaller footprint. We'll actually start off here on the kitchen. So you will see that it is a smaller kitchen. You have the uh, kind of shallow single bowl sink. I wish this would be a little bit deeper, but you have the high rise faucet there. Also the uh, two burner cooktop. And you know, th with this one, they did have it horizontal rather than vertical. So my opinion, having it horizontal like this makes it easier to use. The downside is you just you, you lose prep space. As you'll see, you just don't have a lot of uh, area or space to prep food here. If you need to plug anything in, you have the electrical outlet right over to the side. Um, again, you know, it's, it's tough to find a space for a coffee maker. Maybe you have like a single cup or something, you can fit it back here. But there's just not a lot of room in the kitchen itself. If we take a look up top, you will see your uh, main cabinet right up there. Microwave over to the side, hood underneath with a light and fan. Multimedia center is actually located right underneath, which is fine. You know, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of an odd placement, but there's not a super great place for it. So this works just fine. It does have the HDMI uh, input as well as your uh, uh, Bluetooth capability. And then if you take a look underneath, this is nice, right? This is a nice big open space. You have some versatility here because you can, uh, you know, put a trash can down there if you want. Or, you know, remember you have to have a spot for some of your pots and pans. Maybe you want to do both. So you, you have uh, some options as far as what to put under there. Also, you have two full extension drawers here for your flatware and whatever else you need, whether that's, you know, kitchen towels or uh, washcloths, hot pads, things like that. Next to that's the Dometic fridge freezer combo. Open that guy up for you. This, of course, works off both propane and electric and has automatic switch over. Right down underneath that is a direct vent furnace. In, a, in an RV this size, that's definitely all you need. It'll keep things nice and toasty for you. If you take a look here, this is the thermostat. Now this is just for the furnace. There is an AC uh, unit on the roof itself, but the controls for that are on that unit. Um, so remember, this is just for the heat. Then the rest of your control panel is located here. I actually like this. A lot of times manufacturers put it in the bathroom. I like having it a little more accessible, especially if someone's in the bathroom. Uh, so of course, it has your water pump, your heater, and then your tank monitoring panel on there as well. Making our way into the bathroom itself. So, uh, to be perfectly honest, it's tight, right? As you can see, um, you know, I'm kind of pinned on both sides. I wish that they would have cut this back. Uh, that would have given a lot more space for my left side because as it is right now, um, you know, it just, it is tight and you know, I can lean forward right now, but once the door's closed, I can't do that. So it's, it's a little tough. As far as leg space, the leg space isn't too bad. Being six foot tall, I do have enough room. It's just tight here on the shoulders, but because they didn't cut this back, you do have excellent countertop space for a bathroom this size, plenty of storage here underneath. And you can actually see there's another uh, storage area even underneath that. So there is a lot of storage in here, just not a lot of space to sit. And then mirrored medicine cabinet. This is nice and large as well. It's a you know wood medicine cabinet, not a plastic one. You have your vent fan right up top, one LED light. It's not super bright in here. So you know if you're showering at night, it can be a little dark. And as far as showering goes, you can see I'm six foot and I am topping it out. So just know that you know if you're six foot or taller, you're gonna have to bend down. If you're real tall, you know if you're of course real tall to me, uh, if you're like six three, six four, you're definitely gonna struggle to shower in here for sure. Uh, but if you're shorter than six foot, you, you won't have any issues. Making our way back out. So along the back wall, this is storage. And I think they nailed it here. I think they did a good job. You will see you have the cubby holes, whether you want that for folded clothes, if you want that as part of a linen closet, um, you know, maybe even some pantry space. I know it's a, a ways back, but you do have that versatility there. And then this, I love this. This is why I say when they nailed it, this is it right here. You have a big wardrobe going all the way across. Um, I think this is fantastic. It gives you a spot to hang the clothes if you have, um, you know, because there is one up front, but it's a little bit smaller. So this allows you to kind of bring all those clothes with you, especially if you use this for folded clothes. Basically all of your clothes can be right back here. And then underneath, again, kind of shared with that storage. So as I said, just a ton of storage on this back wall, which is fantastic. 
you have a little bit there underneath, I know. I don't know, you can put a couple of shoes under there, some flip flops, something like that. I know it's toward the back of the camper, not by the door, but at least it still gives you a spot to put them. Now with this large slide, you will see if you look underneath, they did a good job of utilizing the space where the slide components are not. So you'll see that you have drawers here, a couple more up front. You have three underneath the sofa there. You have an electrical outlet. So they did a good job. You know, and the electrical outlet's well-placed, whether you need to uh, plug in like a laptop, tablet, cell phone, or if you need to plug in a vacuum, gives you a spot to do that as well. Now it is lifted. You'll see that the, uh, the slide is raised up. Um, now th that helps keep the profile of the RV down. As you saw when I stepped in that shower, it is not a tall ceiling, but with a lightweight unit, you don't want it to be too tall because then it, you're gonna have a harder time towing it because of all the wind resistance you know, above your vehicle. Because chances are you're not gonna be towing this to three quarter ton truck. Um, as you can see here for the dinette, there is plenty of room for four people to sit, so that's great. It does drop down into a sleeping space as well, not a large one, but it does still have that capability. Windows uh, in, uh, along the slide there, which is great to help let in a lot of that natural light. And moving over to this side here, you will see behind the couch you have this shelf and you have storage right in the back. Um, you know, that might be a good, good spot for some extra bedding. You can kind of stuff it down in there. It's out of the way. You can still grab it because with this particular jackknife, as you can see, you don't get the storage here. So uh, you kind of have to utilize the storage in the back. This also drops down to a bed. Again, not a very big bed, but it does become a bed. And then in the very front, speaking of beds, this of course is our uh, main sleeping area. You do have the kind of headboard or footboard, whatever you want it to be there with both a USB port and an electrical outlet. So if you have a CPAP machine, you can put it up there. Again, you probably want to put your pillows here if that's the case. You'll see again, as I mentioned, you have the, the one wardrobe there, shelf going across the top. You have an electrical outlet over to the side. Uh, so you do have it on kind of both ends. And lastly, if you want a TV, that is where you will mount it. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Springdale 1860. Your 20 pound propane tank sits right up front here. You'll see the rails for your battery and diamond etch plating, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Coming around to the side, we'll open up the front storage compartment. And if you take a look, you'll see that is a full pass-through, which is wonderful. Same size door on both sides. For a trailer this size, that's actually pretty good storage. This one does come with a power awning as well. So you just touch a button to roll it out. Same thing to go right back in. The LED light strip can function no matter what position it's in. It's not like you have to fully extended to use the LED light. You can use it fully retracted just as it is right now. You also see this one has the power rail uh, by Dometic. So there are some auxiliary equipment you can put in here like uh, you know extra lights, uh, things like that. Pretty neat little system. You will also see some outside speakers. Those are connected to that multimedia center inside. But again, that unit is Bluetooth capable. Right out here is your, uh, your electrical outlet. So you need to plug anything in. That will be the place to do it. And as we make our way around to the back, you'll see this square tubular bumper with the end caps that we have a spot to store your sewer hose. Your spare tire is mounted to that, so it's easy to access. Cable inlet is a little bit further up. As we make our way around to the off-door side, I will show you the slide system. The slide utilizes a worm gear slide. So a quick note on this, folks, because it is such a big slide on a smaller unit, you want to make sure that when you uh, extend it or retract it, just hold that button down for an extra uh, like two seconds after it's fully extended or fully retracted. That'll help sync the motors back up. That way your slide will continue to run flawlessly because it has two different motors and you don't want it to get out of sync. You also see the 30 amp power supply is right there. Termination underneath, you can see both the black and gray tank valves located there. And if we make our way to the front of the slide here, last couple things is our water inlets. You'll see the fresh tank fill located right next to the city water inlet. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Springdale 1860. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed here, what you think they missed, what you might tweak or uh, change a little bit, or if you were designing it, what you would do to the 1860. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.